<laughs> and we're back with Raphael Mudge and, of course, Armitage. Raphael is a Washington, D.C.-based penetration tester and the developer of Armitage for Metasploit. He also created and sold After the Deadline, an artificial intelligence tool that checks grammar and spelling for WordPress.com. I could use that for basically everything that I type <laughs> into the computer. Um, previously, uh, he was a U.S. Air Force communications officer involved in network, network operations and cyber security research. Cyber. Drink. Welcome, Raphael. <laughs> Everything's got to have the word cyber in it. That's right. That's a beltway term that we've learned to love. I don't know. It's, well, we love cyber. That's what cyber. we'll say about that. Drink. Drink. So, Raphael, welcome to the show. Um, so, uh, very quickly, how did you uh, get your start in uh, information security? Oh, man. Um, let's see here. I grew up as a, an IRC back when I was a teenager. Mm. And their bandwidth was power, and the goal was to eventually get a job in ISP. And I got picked up pretty early, and eventually I left that. I'm like, yeah, enough of that. And I went to college, never thought I was going to go do anything with security. And eventually in 2003, I went to an internship uh, with the Air Force Research Lab. And, oh, I got to give a shout out to Herb. He's from there, too. Hi, and Herb. Go to, hey, Herb. I go to this lab, and it was a 10-week course um, where they basically taught us forensics, um, how to do kind of like basic red teaming stuff, uh, crypto. I mean, it was just fantastic. I really enjoyed myself and said, okay, security is what I want to do when I go into the Air Force. Nice, very nice. And um, at some point, you went on to what I would gather you probably used Metasploit uh, pretty heavily, right? Oh, that's a great question. So back then, when I went to the internship, it's 2003. I mean, to get into a box, I was still, you know, scan it and go to rootshell.com, try to find yeah, an exp yeah. and compile it. So it was a bit uh, pre Metasploit back then. And. I think what drew me back into, uh, I don't know, the hacking side of things is I'm involved with something called the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Yes. As you know, because we saw each other. We saw each other there last year. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic. Uh, CCDC, you've heard us talk about it on the show a lot. Uh, Raphael was there on the, on the red team. I've been involved um, with the Northeast region since uh, 2008. Awesome. And strangely enough, actually... I didn't know anything about Metasploit or how to use it until probably about, oh, a bit over a year ago. Mm -hmm. I just never really picked it up. I'm the kind of guy, I always coded my own stuff, and I'm kind of old school in my ways, and when I saw it like, and really kind of dug into it, I was like, wow, there is so much capability here. And I knew what I kind of wanted for these red team engagements, and so I said, okay, maybe I can design something to help make that easier. And in particular, uh, team collaboration was a big focus of mine. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I set out and said, okay, after uh, CCDC in 2010, I'm like, I'm going to build something for Metasploit. I had no idea how I was going to do it. I didn't know about the RPC daemon. Um, I thought maybe I would use the MSF CLI, but I knew I wanted to make an interface that made it possible for a team of people to work together and pass sessions back and forth so you could actually really collaborate as a team. And, and, that was, and that's really the, the crux of Armitage, right? It, it, it's to pass shells back and forth, basically stemming from your work on the various uh, capture the flag type events that you were working on. I would say it was from the pain I felt at those mm -hmm. capture the flag events. Yeah. Because we would have a team of 10 people and at uh, Northeast, at uh, Mid-Atlantic, it was slightly bigger, 30, I think. And what would happen is, well, here, let me go back to 2008. We had a guy who came in with Core Impact, mm -hmm. okay? And he had this nice GUI, and he was just getting into everything, left and right. And I really kind of developed like the, this little bit of envy, like, man, I know how to code, but, man, I wish I could hack like that because he's just like boom, boom, boom. And, and I, I tell and you, so, having, having used Core Impact at some of those uh, events – it is, I mean, as far as user-friendly and being able to do what you need to do quickly in that environment, Impact rocks. One, and the way, to give you a little history, um, the way Core Impact got its start, 
uh, and gained a lot of popularity, especially amongst the Sands crowd, is they went to a CTF like way back in the day at Sands and totally <laughs> demolished any of the competition because, it, I mean, it's set up for that. You know, I mean, you just you know you're pointing and clicking and, and exploiting. Whereas in Metasploit, you know, as as kind of you alluded to a little bit too, you know, you have to type and do a little bit more manual type stuff to get to where you need to be, and the the paths are the same. I think just some are just more direct than others. No, absolutely. I agree with that. And one thing I noticed though, at my, as my several years at Northeast CCDC, I worked with some extremely bright people, but many of the advanced features of Metasploit, we just didn't use them. Yeah. And so that was my goal is when I really started kind of digging deep into the framework is like, wow, I really want to curate what's here and make it easy to do the really cool stuff in my mind. Mm. And there's nothing that really, uh, I think, does what Armitage does in terms of being able to share shells with people. I think that's a really unique feature. Well, thank you. I, here's what really kind of uh, caused me to think about this was in 2010, we had uh, persisted on several of the Linux boxes uh, against several teams. And it turned out late Saturday, this was the last of our uh, of our access. And we had a cron job that was calling back and that was it. And so what we would do is tell it, hey, download the shell script and run netcat six times and give us each a connection back. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of got like the joy and excitement of what it's like when a team is able to all work on one box at the same time. Right, right. Un Unfortunately, though, it was really noisy, and the team saw it pretty quick and eventually kind of kicked us out. And I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool if when I was hacking, I saw everything my teammates saw, and we were able to just sit down, you know, computer pops up, get some fresh lightning bolts. I can jump in, open up a shell. I don't have to ask permission. I don't have to beg the guy who's getting into everything to concentrate or drop his concentration to help me. I can just go in and find some way to be useful. And that was really my vision. I just want to make it possible to hack as a team. Mm. So now the different instances of Armitage talk to each other? So, so here's the way it works. Yeah. All right. So you have one shared Metasploit server, okay? Mm -hmm. I should caveat that. I'm giving a technical description, then I'll give a practical kind of here's how you'd use it. Sure. There's one shared Metasploit um, server, like just a host, and it can be headless. And on that, you run Metasploit's RPC daemon and another piece of software built into Armitage, I call it a deconfliction server. And this software adds things to Metasploit, like it caches certain commands to keep Metasploit from getting overloaded. It um, deconflicts Meterpreter. And it also, if I take a screenshot from a remote client, it downloads that file so Armitage can display it. So the clients are all connecting to this shared Metasploit server and this deconfliction server, which is able to detect, oh, hey, uh, Paul sent a uh, command to Meterpreter session one. I'm going to queue that up, run it, and then route the output to Paul and Paul only. I gotcha. And that's how you're able to let everyone share a shell, basically. Absolutely. And so it's now pretty cool you, because so oh. you send commands through that single Metasploit server to go compromise something, and then if it comes back with a shell, basically anyone can access it. So in practice, here's what I found. Hmm. Uh, I've tried out many different experiments. I've been in a lot of uh, exercises this past year, and of course my own pen testing work. And I found if everybody attacks from the same box, it's kind of chaotic hmm. <laughs> and a little dangerous. But what works really well is kind of decentralized hacking where everybody's kind of getting accesses however they want to. And then they pass a session uh, using multi-meter inject. Thanks, Carlos. And mm -hmm. they pass a session back to this shared post-exploitation server that I everyone see. else is connected to. I see. And what's cool about that is your attack people, they can just do what they like doing, and then there can be other people who maybe aren't as into trying to find ways in, and they can be waiting for something to pop up, and they can do like a specific job, like, hey, I need to pull these files, or right. I need to work on persistence. Yep. Yeah, and that's how I've always recommended that, and it's, I think it was really just a lack of tools that um, kind of prevent you from building in an exercise scenario your team this way is you know you need the people that are finding the vulnerabilities you need the people that are exploiting them you need the people that are doing the post exploitation to collect data and then you need the people that you know maybe maintain persistent access 
I agree and, wholeheartedly. And some of those roles are combined, right? Like you may be the same person, may be finding vulnerabilities and exploiting them, and the other person may be collecting information and uh, maintaining persistence. Um, but those are like so to- totally, two totally different roles um, that, you know, your tool allowing people to do that is is really, really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, too. I mean, the cool thing about these exercises, if, if for those who play Red, it's a chance for us to bring, like, our ideas and toys and just really try them out against a diverse uh, number of uh, teams, like people who are really watching for the attacks, and yeah. just see what happens. Yeah, I've always said that's one of the greatest benefits for me playing Red Team is that mm-hmm. you get to break into systems that are being actively defended by a person. Mm-hmm. And if if <laughs> yeah. you can break in and stay in in that scenario, you know, when you go out and do your pen tests, um, you've gotten some great practice. Oh, and it's all about staying in because at CCDC, where the environment's pretty artificial, you can get in, but quickly the students get their defenses up and they work on trying to keep you out. And what I'm really proud of is that um, past exercises I've been at, particularly Northeast and Mid-Atlantic CCDC, I thought we did a really good job of pretty much staying in till the end. And that's really exciting to me. Mm. So um, what are some of the, the uh, features of Armitage uh, above and beyond what we've talked about that allow you to do that? Okay, so here's what's really cool. Uh, Armitage, the teaming stuff came later because I released it in December 2010 or the last day of November, and it didn't have any of this stuff, but it was always my plan to do this. This is why I was doing it. And I started, I was like, well, I want a client for Metasplay. I want something that feels like how I would like to use it. And so it visualizes your targets in a really kind of intuitive way. I mean, it's cheesy, but it's fun. I wanted to have fun with this project. So if you hack into a computer, it turns red with lightning bolts around it to say, hey, this is hacked. It's owned. It shows you your pivots so you can keep track of all that really easily without, you know, saying, hmm, what do I have set up? I did route, add, whatever, and did it work? I don't know. So that's one cool feature. Another neat feature is exploit recommendations. And I had, <laughs> I didn't set up to do this. I kind of wound up on it on accident. Uh, I was looking and saying, hmm, I was looking at DB Autopone and it has a mode to list out exploits. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm, maybe I can use this output to actually build a custom attack tree for each host based on uh, any imported vulnerability scan or port scan data. And for a lot of people who are new to Metasploit, who are intimidated by these 700 some odd exploits, it's really cool to go to tax, find attacks, and just get these recommendations. And on top of that, I like to say I'm very proud that even though it's good, you know, doing that kind of stuff for the novices, it's a really good just uh, user interface for interacting with Meterpreter. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, so if you're the more, host, yeah, the more advanced people are probably using it to just interact with Meterpreter and maybe so are, did you find that there's a lot of now pen test uh, teams outside of the exercises that are using this tool? Yes. So I did a survey a few weeks ago. I uh, offered people, I was like, hey, if you fill out this survey on Google Docs, I'm going to mail you an Armitage sticker. Okay. Mm-hmm. And nothing gets people excited quite like stickers. I mean, oh, we know, I know. We've given out really many awesome. a hack naked. <laughs> I think we gave out probably a thousand uh, hack naked stickers at DEF CON. How, how much are the stickers? Uh, twenty nine cents no, a piece, no, roughly. Just, no, that's what know. they kept saying at the booth. How much? Yeah, is the how much no, are the stickers? Free. Yeah, for uh, they were mine are four and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheap. You know, it's like it's open stores here. Four and a half cents. That's how much I'm spending per sticker. Love nice, you guys. Nice. So, okay, so the question was, how are people using Armitage and what am I seeing? So the survey was really helpful because people don't every day email and say, oh, hey, here's exactly how I'm using the software. So I had to bribe people to get that answer. And I also asked people, hey, I asked them, tell me a really cool story. Uh, Tell me what your skill level is and what other tools you use. And so there were people all over the board, you know, people who do use it for learning, they're using it in classes, people who are using it to teach Metasploit. I just found out when I was Googling the other day, I found out that for a summer program, the Air Force Academy uh, was using Armitage in one of their lessons. And for me as an Air Force veteran, I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than knowing, you know, like, oh, wow, cool. But uh, yeah, so it's being used to teach Metasploit. And what's really cool, though, is, yeah, pen testers are using it. And to my surprise, 
I didn't think I did a good job communicating that, hey, this teaming stuff exists. But in my survey responses, that's what a lot of people claimed that they liked about Armitage. Like, yeah, I love the fact we can coordinate our team this way. And one guy, Henry, he told me, he's like, dude, my company, I convinced them to buy a Mac Mini. We use it as an Armitage server. And today I'm in Minnesota for AppSec USA. And I met this guy from a DC company. He's like, oh, dude, we love Armitage. You know, we've had like 10 people on it and, you know, reason for all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's definitely being to, used. It's mm. interesting to survey your users and figure out how they're using the, uh, the product that you're creating. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, did you get feedback that you then uh, are like working on the next version? Oh, I have I received a lot of really, really valuable feedback. And I mean, that's my goal. I want to improve the tool and make it better for people. Uh, so one of the things, you know, people says like, hey, uh, it doesn't give a lot of feedback when I launch an exploit. And so I added a preference. It's in the current version, uh, but it's off by default that runs every exploit and post module that Armitage does in the background in its own tab. So you can see all the commands. Yeah. So I, I, I found, especially with the, the pen tester vulnerability assessment crowd, they like feedback mm -hmm. on what's happening at all times. So I'm going to turn it on and see how people react to it. I suspect they'll like it, but I'm very conservative when it comes to making changes because I don't want people to get used to something and then rip it apart. And they're like, oh, is this the same software I was using before? Mm. But that's something I received a lot. Um, another thing people really ask for is they say, we really want reporting. We really want the ability to generate a report uh, out of this. That sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> we, may, we may have heard we may reporting have heard, requests yeah, somewhere reporting else requests. in life. Yeah, people love reporting. And they want reporting to do everything and have lots of different features and be really robust. And you, I mean, you can't blame them, right? I mean, flexible, flexible, the, not to flexible. Read your like own the report, the report is the value of what you just did as a test, and it's what you're right. delivering. So it doesn't surprise me that um, you get a lot of requests for uh, feature. What did you say it was? Flexible, reporting. Flexible, oh, flexible, flexible reporting. Flexible, flexible enough so, to do a reach around. That's the. Oh, is that is that how you phrase it, Jack? I'm, thanks for the visual. <laughs> now, there's some really great products that do reporting, and that's like one of the big selling points. But I'm trying to meet people halfway. Uh, before Metasploit four, I made a big concentration to add activity logging. Yep. So everything that happens in a tab. Armitage tries to figure out what host it's associated with and logs it to a folder based on the date and the host, and it archives screenshots you took, uh, webcam shots you captured, uh, files you downloaded. It keeps all that output from all these different tabs, and it also keeps track of just the more generic your interactions with the consoles. And in the teaming mode, the event log, which allows your team to chat and see the major events of the, of the engagement, that gets logged too. So that's really helpful. And now I'm contemplating, but still figuring out what's the best thing to export, having like kind of a raw data export mode where Armitage spits out everything in Metasploit in a, in a tab-separated value in XML formats. So you can kind of write your own stuff and adapt that into your process. Mm. Very cool. So uh, what's coming up in the uh, in the next version, you think? So, <clears throat> excuse me. What I'm currently doing, I'm always polishing. I'm one of those people I love to polish my software and just try to make it do little things better. If you look at my change log, I mean, just I fix a lot of bugs and I really try to focus on the details and then do one major thing at a time. So the next thing, I'm not set on it yet, but what I'm I wrote an IRC client many years ago, and the client never got popular, or as popular as I would have liked, but it attracted a good community of people who wrote scripts for it, and people still write scripts for it many years later. So I would like to make Armitage scriptable in such a way that a novice, even somebody who hasn't really programmed before, could pick it up, easily add new menu items, make it so it can run other tools and present the output in Armitage, and make it so... People who choose to write scripts for it, they can trade them with other people and really integrate their process around this front end that allows teaming. You know, that's a it's a great goal. If you look at the, I think the three more popular security tools, Nmap, Nessus, and Metasploit, they all right. have ways in which the end user can customize and write their own checks or 
uh, functionality or features or whatever. Right. Well, what would be nice about this is it'll be a very, very high level, like, it won't be like the program language basic, but it'd be that simple pickup. Somebody's going to be able to look at it, copy and paste some code and paste yeah, somewhere else yeah. and it'll just work. Yep. And I've been through this before with my other program and I've got people for my IRC client, you know, scripts from like a couple lines all the way up to many thousands of lines. So I think I have an approach that would work really well with Armitage. So I'm giving a lot of thought to that. Very cool. Well, Raphael, thank you very much for appearing on Paul.com. Uh, Darren, did you have a question? So, I was so how, large for... is the, how large is the team that you have uh, working on this? Oh, Armitage? Oh, man, the team's amazing. It's a crackpot team of one. Nah. Yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> did you I, I, I knew, I knew that, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Raphael's working on this all by himself. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, now, uh, are you willing to add different developers if people want to help and contribute and help you out? Well, that's part of my uh, goal for the scripting is to make it accessible for other people to actually try out different ideas real quick, see what right. takes, and then right. merge those things into the core of it uh, for ideas that really make sense. Remember, part of the idea is I want this to be a very curated experience, not a here's everything Metasploit can do. Let's create a, like 500 menu items for all these things. Very cool. You can find Armitage at fastandeasyhacking.com. That's right, fastandeasyhacking.com. Raphael, thank you very much for appearing on Paul.com. We thank you very much for your contribution to the security community, and we, and, uh, we look forward to all the wonderful features of Armitage. <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, remember, Armitage fast and easy, so thanks for having me. All righty. Take care, Raphael.